Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to attempt to explain all about full house glider setup. Sound of a steam train in the background. <laughs> Listen to that. So what do I mean by full house glider setup? That's when you have all control surfaces on separate channels, ailerons on separate channels, flaps on separate channels, elevator and rudder all on separate channels so that you can control them individually and you can mix and match them in different modes such as normal ailerons, full span ailerons which is where you have the flaps and the ailerons working together, crow braking where you have the flaps going down the ailerons going up, camber which is where you drop all the control surfaces down a little bit just a few millimetres or reflex which is where you uh, lift all the wing control surfaces up just a few millimetres. Now a lot of these settings have more relevance for a high-end sort of composite really finely engineered model. This is just a foamy, very good thermal foamy in my book. This is the Phoenix Evolution 2.6 metre wing setup. Now I'm going to show you just the most basic uh, full house setup uh, which is separate ailerons, crow braking and camber. And the fact that I don't have to have the flaps going up at all means that I can do a sort of a specific simple setup for the flaps and I'll show you how to do that. I'll be using my Tyrannus X9D Plus and an 8 channel FR Sky receiver, the one with the Vario built in. But it's going to be the simplest, minimal full house setup. I have separate ailerons, I have uh, crow braking on the slider there. So the top movement of the slider down to middle position, the flaps go halfway down, and then from middle position to bottom position. Flaps go all the way down and the ailerons pop up a little bit. And we also have a little bit of camber on a switch here where the ailerons and the flaps all go down just a couple of millimetres for a bit of extra lift when you're actually in a thermal or floating around. Now I don't use full span ailerons. That's more of an aerobatic uh, requirement and this is a glider for me. It doesn't need to be aerobatic. And as I said before, the fact that I don't have to have the flaps coming up at all, uh, it simplifies the setup and the programming quite a lot. To set up the flaps properly and use the full rotation of the servo, which gives you the best torque and the best uh, accuracy or resolution of the servo. So this is the neutral position when the servo arm is at 90 degrees and the flap is halfway down. Full down position is when the servo is pulling all the way back and that gives you the maximum down deflection. You can hear that complaining there, that's as far as I can pull it down. The servo can actually go a little bit further, but that's the limit of the movement of the hinge on the flap. Uh, what would that be? About 45 degrees down, I suppose. It's just as far as I can get it with this setup. And then in the full up position, the flaps are level. So once again, I'm using the full travel of the servo to make the flaps go from level to full down. To get that, I adjust the length of the push rod when the servo is in the middle position, so the flap is halfway down, and it's level when the servo is full back. Flaps are full down when the servo is full forward. You just need to adjust where you attach on the control surface control horn to get the amount of deflection. Further in gives you more deflection, further out gives you less deflection, and where you attach on the servo arm as well. But the important point is the starting point, the neutral point of the servo, the flap you adjust the length of the push rod so that the flap is halfway down. Then you can do fine adjustments in the radio with the endpoints to get the flaps level position exactly right and flaps full down position so that it's not straining too hard. If you did want full span ailerons then you just take off the control rod, lengthen the control rod, put the servo in neutral position and lengthen the control rod so that in the neutral position it's roughly something like that. You now have up and down movement of the flap. But that's only for aerobatic flight. We'll adjust that push rod back to its original position. I prefer to set up my models totally from scratch. I don't like using the model setup Lua script. First step is to bind your receiver. I've got a video on how to do that. I'll link to that in the description. I don't worry with inputs at all usually. Uh, you can set up an input for say ailerons and put 
expo and differential and different sorts of things like that in there if you want to but you can also do that on the mixer page so here we are we've got a clean slate here channel one is my uh, right aileron I just hit enter and it already puts in aileron there I want 100% I might put some expo in there as well that's under the curve here there's expo the amount 30% uh, it's pretty standard for my setups and you can just plug the right aileron in and check how it works, if it's going in the correct direction or whatever. Might even just copy that down to channel two. So right aileron, channel one, left aileron, channel two. Uh, throttle for me on channel three. Uh, I want the elevator on channel four. 30% expo. Done. And rudder five. Don't really need expo on rudder. Channel 6 will be flaps uh, on the left slider. I'll work out the weight or limits uh, once I plug them in and fire it up and operate them. Copying that down to channel 7 for the uh, right flap as well. So now we've got both flaps on the left slider. Rudder channel 5, elevator channel 4 with some expo, throttle channel 3 and ailerons on channel 1 and 2. Alright, so that's our starting point. We can actually fly the plane at this stage, as long as all the control surfaces are moving in the correct direction. If the ailerons are going in the reverse direction, then you can just page through to the next screen. And to reverse the direction of a channel, this is channel one, you're reversing the direction of channel one. This little arrow over here, you just flick across to that, hit the enter, and it'll reverse the direction. If you change that to minus 100, it would have the same effect. So at this stage I'd plug them all in and make sure everything's working in the correct direction and then work out what weights are correct for the travels I need. Now I want to set up some uh, crow braking, so that's when the flaps are going down, the left slider, I want the ailerons to go up. So what I'm going to do is copy one of these left slider uh, flap lines up to the aileron. So now channel 1 is being operated by the aileron stick and the left slider and of course I don't want it to work 100% like that. What I worked out was 70%, and you do this just by looking at the travel, uh, and I want to limit that to just the bottom half of movement of the slider, like that. So function x is less than zero, that's when the slider is going down, down below the centre position. That means that when I operate the left slider, for the first half of the movement the flaps will go down, for the second half of the movement, the flaps will go further down and the ailerons will go up a little bit. And I'll copy that to the other aileron as well. And each time I'll check the movement to make sure it's all going in the correct direction and it's doing what we want it to do. Now if we didn't have this x is less than zero function, the ailerons would be drooping down when the left slider is up and they'd go up when the left slider is down. Now we don't want the ailerons to go down at all like that. We only want the up movement of the ailerons uh, to help with crow braking. So using this x is less than zero function that gets rid of that uh, down movement of the ailerons for the first half of the left slider motion. Now by checking the movement of the control surface, the right aileron, crow braking, I found that the right aileron was going down instead of up. So I just needed to change that 70 to minus 70 and that's now working in the correct direction. Now usually when you drop the flaps down most models will pitch up and that's the same with this model um, so I need to put in a little bit of elevator compensation with the flaps or the left slider. So I copied one of those left slider lines down to the elevator and I'll edit that and I found that uh, minus 10 was the right amount of compensation to keep the model level when the crow braking was on. I don't really need that um, x is less than zero function, it just uh, works as it is. So that now drops the elevator down a little bit whenever you're using the uh, left slider, which is the crow braking. Now we'll introduce some camber, which is just a little bit of uh, droop down of the ailerons and the flaps uh, on a switch. I'm going to use the SP SB switch up here, copy another line down there, edit that. So I'd, I would choose the source as max, the weight as 10, and the switch as the SB switch in the middle position. And I'd check to make sure that 
is the correct amount and the correct direction of movement and it'll do another one minus 15 say with the SB switch in the down position so now I've got sort of three positions uh, level 10% down and 15% down and I will just copy them down to all the other control surfaces so that's copying it onto the uh, left aileron and I also need to reverse the direction of travel and uh, to get that to work on the flaps as well I just copy that down onto channel 6 and channel 7 and to get the camber working in the correct direction I needed to change them to negative percentage so there we have it that's my full house setup right aileron on channel 1 left aileron on channel 2 left slider also uh, kicks the aileron up only when the slider goes down below zero position on the SB switch we have a little bit of camber as well so that's same for those two ailerons throttle is stays the same elevator we have a little bit of flat to elevator mixing so that when the left slider goes down the elevator also goes down a little bit as well to uh, stop it from ballooning up flaps on the left slider uh, and the channel 6 and channel 7 are also operated a little bit by the SB switch giving a bit of camber as well so I hope that kind of makes sense, uh, it gets a little bit confusing but uh, basically what you do with it, each of these little lines that you add in you just check what effect it's having on the control surface live uh, and make the appropriate adjustments negative, positive, a little bit more, a little bit less. Thank you.